Morning, everyone. Just about morning still. Um, so, yeah, my name is Richard Downey, and I am a director of global new business at an advertising agency called The Specialist Works. Um, I'm here today to talk about how uh, um, app publishers can use uh, TV um, to drive um, large-scale app acquisition in a way um, that really hasn't been done before, um, in a way that's trackable, optimizable, uh, and all those other things which uh, mobile marketers love to do. Um, before I get into our uh, methodology, uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's a methodology that's been built with the uh, mobile games market in mind, I will spend a minute or two just a little introduction to our business. So we're based in London. Um, uh, we are a uh, what we call a full service advertising agency, which means we are uh, we have media buying departments across what you would call all of the core channels. I run the the yellow bit there, uh, the digital mobile bit. So I've got a team of mobile user acquisition specialists um, that help um, companies uh, promote their apps across all verticals: games, gambling, dating, travel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, my background is very firmly in mobile UA. Uh, I've been working in mobile media agencies for the last five or six years. Uh, and the one thing that um, that's always kind of annoyed me is to see so much uh, marketing and advertising budget go into TV uh, for app publishers uh, without them really having a feel for whether it's working or not, um, without really having an idea about how to optimize their TV campaigns, uh, and basically, you know, f uh, being in a situation whereby everything that they've ever kind of learned about uh, testing and optimizing and tracking and attributing kind of being left at the door when it comes to TV because people have told them time and time again that TV is for branding and it can't be tracked. So that's a bit of a background. As to, as to how we got to um, uh, the situation we're in now. Uh, I'll skip past this, because I'm sure every agency you've ever seen has got a slide full of awards, but we, uh, we do OK on that front. Uh, in terms of global reach, uh, as I said earlier, we're based in London, uh, but we have offices in Stockholm, in uh, Germany, in Ireland. We've just launched in New York, which is really, really exciting for us. Uh, and we also have a number of um, really close partnerships, actually, with agencies around the world, whereby if we cannot um, fulfill the TV or media buying generally in a country, uh, we will find an agency that's thinks and works the same way as we do to, to help do that. In terms of our client list, um, here's a bit of a cross section. I'm not sure how many of these you guys would be uh, familiar with. Um, the one thing that most of these have in common is that they are predominantly digital focused. Um, and that's because the way that we work, uh, even in channels outside of digital, uh, is very kind of digitally focused as well, as I'll uh, go on to talk about. OK, so. Let's get to the, the core of it. We, have, we are working really hard on developing a way of using television that feels uh, as close to uh, the digital experience as people are familiar with. So what I found in the past is the best way to describe how we work and the difference it makes is to kind of do a, uh, a bit of a contrast between what I call the, the traditional TV agency, how it works normally, what the process is, what, where the levels of feedback are, and, exact, and where the uh, results are, and then I'll go on to talk about how we do it slightly differently. Okay, so um, if you are familiar with how TV uh, buying works, then this will be a, a scenario that, that you know about already. Um, the TV industry and TV media is, is you know, still enormous. You know, linear TV, although people say it's under threat through catch-up, um, through on-demand services, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, in terms of the money that gets paid into linear TV, the, the numbers are still absolutely staggering. And the reason that it's such, one of the reasons it's such a, um, a successful and profitable media channel is because for years and years and years, this kind of approach has gone kind of unchallenged. So the TV agencies will say it works in the same way, in a certain way. The TV stations will say it works in a certain way. And companies for whom direct response and performance and attribution and optimization will just get told, if you want to use TV, you have to do it this way. If you're not comfortable with this, maybe TV isn't for you. So 
what we have here at the bottom where it says energy expenditure, this is basically, this is the agent, TV agency's role in things, okay? So let's say, for example, you have a game that very, very broadly targets 18 to 30-year-old men, okay? So you'll sit down with your TV agency. They will say, not a problem. We know how to re reach 18 to 30-year-old men. We will do all the research. We will put together a TV plan that might have some sport and some comedy and some music and all this type of stuff. They'll come back to you and present it and say, right, you want to reach 18 to 30-year-old men. If you put your ads, your TV ads, in this, if we, if we fulfill this plan for you, then every 18 to 30 year old man in this country will see the ad three times, okay? Opportunity to see. That's our metric. As long as we've done that, we've done our job. So, the advertiser, the, in, this, in this situation, the app publisher, will be given this um, list of TV ads and this strategy. Uh, they sign it off. The TV advertising gets booked. There's typically a four to six week gap between the advertising being booked and the TV campaign actually going live. Six weeks later, the TV campaign goes live. It runs across, you know, however long it is, four, five, six weeks. And the, the, the agency that's bought the media will be reporting in. Good news. This program that we said would be good has got X number of viewers. Therefore, your target audience has been reached. Then at the end of the campaign, at the end, everybody sits down normally over some nice lunch. And they, at that point, kind of have a discussion about whether it's worked or not. Uh, and as a outcome of that discussion, they decide whether to do some more, okay? That's the typical TV agency. You want to reach 18 to 30-year-old men. Here's a list of programs that will enable you to do it. Off we go. See you in a few weeks. Our approach is very, very different. So like I said earlier, my background is in mobile user acquisition, and I work with clients who, for whom every single cent of their budget has to be justified, right? It has to be justified from a cost per install point of view, from a cost per acquisition, retention, whatever it is. Um, you know, and I don't really see why TV or any media should be treated any differently. So we've come up with a, a, a very, very different way of doing this. So rather than us using the metric of you want to reach this demographic and we will make sure that those people see this. We, we kind of started thinking about how do we actually genuinely and realistically attribute performance back to TV, okay? Because as far as I'm concerned, unless you're Machine Zone or Supercell or King or one of those huge guys, if you've got some money that's going into TV, for you to scale that, for there to be more money and bigger campaigns, you kind of have to get a feel for whether it's worked or not. So our way of working is at the bottom here. So um, we, uh, we take the same brief, but our brief is not, um, or, or our, our KPIs are not, we will make sure your ad is seen by these people. Our KPIs are, we will make sure your game is downloaded by these people. And the way that we do that is we, uh, we carry out the same planning that the other agencies would do. Uh, uh, we book our ads a lot later, which means that there's a lot more flexibility in terms of the um, situations that we can use. And then, and here's the crucial bit in terms of the buying side of it. Once the campaign is live, through our tracking and optimization and attribution, which I'll talk about in a second, we're able to see in practically real time whether our strategy is working or not, right? So, no marketer in the mobile world would ever think that the strategy that you start with is going to be the strategy that you end with, right? That's what optimization is all about. Whereas in the traditional TV agency world, that's what happens. You sign off a plan, the plan happens, and it's only at the end whether you decide whether it works or not. For us, it's about in-campaign optimization. It's about looking at the results and the data that come on a daily basis and analyzing every single choice that we make the TV station that we spend with, the day, the length of the creative, whether morning is better than afternoon, etc., etc. And then as we go along, we optimize, okay? So there is a flexibility in TV buying that st the traditional TV agencies will not tell you about. There is a flexibility about moving stuff around. 
The way that we buy our, our media, and this works across all uh, countries, not just the UK, although these are UK uh, TV stations, um, we split the TV stations into three uh, categories. Um, at the bottom, we call efficient stars. So these are the small satellite channels, smallish viewing figures, but very concentrated audiences. So, for example, the Good Food channel, okay? You know the people who are watching the Good Food channel are going to be of a certain... They're going to be into food, right? It's not going to be anything else there. The engagement levels of these channels are quite low. Now, the reason that's important is if you have a TV ad that says download the game now and you put it in Game of Thrones, people are not going to break away from Game of Thrones to download that game, right? It's not going to happen. Whereas in these smaller, cheaper channels, the level of engagement is less and therefore the opportunity for people to break away from their TV viewing to actually um, act on a uh, prompt that you give them is greater. Then we have what we call volume drivers. These are kind of uh, getting bigger. So these are channels like, uh, to use uh, uh, British uh, examples, like Comedy Central. Again, you kind of know the demographic, although the, the, um, uh, the programming type is a little bit wider. Uh, and then at the top, you get the, the big guns, right? So these are expensive. They're inflexible. If you want to get ROI, if you want to get genuine, um, you know, low cost per installs, these are probably not the places to go, but these play a really big role in what they call awareness building, right? In making sure that the game is well known enough so that when they do watch, see that ad again, when they're watching something like the Good Food Channel, they're more likely to react to that. These do a really good job in raising awareness and building that level of fame. And how we use these channels depends on what the, uh, what the brief is. So we have direct response, Brand response and brand. So most games, I suppose, depending on budget, are either going to be direct response or brand response. Um, and with the attribution that I'm about to go on and talk about, we can report back on all of these things. So if brand is your, if your um, you know, if you've got huge, huge budgets and it's about making the game famous so that that level of recognition will improve your mobile user acquisition or that level of, uh, level of um, recognition will improve your other efforts, then maybe it's more of a brand campaign. Okay, so there's two parts to what we do. I've talked about our flexible and optimizable approach to buying. Now let's talk about the tracking. I suppose this is the, the most interesting bit to the people in this room. We've developed a solution which we call TV for Apps. And the reason we call it that is because it's very, very focused on the kind of performance metrics that you guys are live your life by. So a couple of little quotes here. We work really closely with the attribution partners that have been mentioned a few times already, like Apps Flyer and Adjust, um, because it's the data that comes out of those things that enable us to report, optimize, and improve on the TV performance that we have. So a little quote from Paul, who's the UK country manager here. Uh, Specialist works are redefining how TV is bought and making it a more app-friendly acquisition channel than ever before. Adalyzer is our TV optimization tool. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, thanks to our pioneering partnership with the Specialist Works, we've launched an integration program with leading app analytics platforms to enable attribution of installs and in-app act act actions. What that means is if your app has uses either Apps Flyer, Tune, or Adjust as your attribution partner, if you work with us and we run your TV campaigns, you will be able to see the performance of each TV station in your attribution solution dashboard alongside your mobile UA um, partners. So, you know, put it in a simple example, alongside Twitter, Facebook, and Google, you will see MTV, Sky Sports 1, Channel 4. Okay, and the way that we do it is that we it says shine a light on organic installs and in-app actions. There's been a lot of conversation so far today about time stamping. We, we interrogate and we look really closely at these organic time stamped installs. We then match them back to TV spots, taking into account things like baselines, taking into account things like organic uplift, chart position, etc., etc. Advance is our integration tool, which um, I'll be happy to talk to you about separately. I don't really have time for it at the moment. But it allows this information to be um, easily ingested and integrated. We can then attribute in-app purchases back to organic downloads as well. So put simply, if we can attribute a download to a TV media source, then obviously we have that user for their lifetime value and we can, we can look to um, report on your TV in exactly the same way as you would report on your mobile acquisition. Um, 
And what this does is it yields a cost per install, uh, cost per insight. So we can report, like I said earlier, you know, we can give you MTV's cost per install against Comedy Central's. We can give you, again, to use UK terms, Sky Sports cost per install against BT Sport. And not only is this really interesting from a reporting perspective, obviously, because you can then compare it to other things you're spending your money on, but from an optimization point of view, we have real actionable data with which to make our decisions. If we think that Sky Sports at the beginning of the campaign campaign is better than BT Sport, and halfway through the campaign the organic data has told us differently, then we make the switch. We can, our flexible approach to buying enables us to optimize as we go. So just a little bit more on the attribution. Um, Advance is a tool which was built to, uh, to track web response to TV. Tracking web response to TV is pretty easy because somebody sees an ad, they go to the URL, within three or four seconds you know whether that's a, uh, whether that's a hit that's come as a uh, result of TV or not. Obviously when you're using apps it's a little bit trickier because the user journey is longer. Got to go to the app store, read the app download page, download the app, wait for the app to load, etc, etc. So being able to attribute uh, an organic app install back to a TV spot is, is more difficult than a web visit, but the tools that we have and the algorithm that Advance has enables us to see this a lot more clearly than, than before. Uh, advanced machine learns response fingerprints for cleaner attribution, so um, it begins to learn what a response spike looks like. So again, you know, it will be able to recognize a MTV-sized spike as opposed to a Comedy Central spike. The reason that's important is um, typically 50% uh, of all TV ads do not go out when they're meant to. So if you're pre-populating your attribution windows, if you're saying in advance, this is when our TV ads are going to go out in the month of September. Here's my attribution windows, and any download that falls in those windows, I will claim for TV. Then half of them are going to be in the wrong place. So, in order to get this information in real time, it's important that the attribution solution that you use knows when the ad has gone out without you having to tell it. Um, and then we can attribute sales, sales value, et cetera, et cetera, um, to the initial response back to the individual spots. So the, the response spike at the top is more typical of a web one, whereby all of a sudden people are seeing an ad and racing towards a website which sees a very steep curve. The secondary uh, attribution curve at the bottom there is more like an app download attribution curve, which is kind of, the attribution window is longer because the, the journey from seeing an ad to installing an app is longer um, and a lot flatter uh, rather than the pronounced spike that comes from web. Uh, and as I said, all our forecasting comes with a cost pair functionality. So. I'm going to give you a little example of this process in action, really. So one of our clients is, is Alex. So I spend a lot of time in China working with Chinese games publishers, trying to help them to increase their acquisition uh, activity in the West. Um, as with most of our clients, their mobile user acquisition is very well catered for in-house. As good as my team are, we can't really add anything to what those guys are doing. But our TV for apps proposition is really, really interesting to them. Um, so we've been working with them for over a year now. Uh, we started by running really small-scale mobile acquisition campaigns, almost to prove our, uh, prove our value, I suppose, and that we kind of knew what we were talking about. Um, the client was very interested but wary of using TV for acquisition. So this, this is a situation that we see across a lot of games publishers. They kind of they like the scale of TV. They, 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 they are excited by what it can do, but the whole branding piece of it is a bit scary for them, and they need to see a bit more. And the concerns I had were about tracking and attribution. Um, so how would we know whether it worked or not? So it's, it's conversations like this that kind of led us into the idea of TV for apps. Um, our approach gave them the confidence that they needed, and from that came a multi-channel campaign. Now I have a video, if we can play that with some sound, that would be great. Thank you very much.
fight together as one. This is your last chance. Defend upon your knees. So obviously that was a, a large multi-channel campaign. Um, uh, I'm out of time now, but uh, I'll be hanging around for um, the rest of today. I'd love to have a conversation with any of you that might be interested to hear a bit more about our process. Thank you very much.